come up to Toronto, the place where you grew up, your dad played there, your wife's family is there, is it like a personal sweetness to this as well? Yeah, for sure, a lot of familiarity uh, with the city. My wife, like you said, growing up there in Markham, Ontario, which is kind of right out the way of, of Toronto, and um, spent sixth through eighth grade uh, off and on up there. So talked about it before. It's always special going back up there. It's still, I don't think it's sunk in, and this is for the final. So pretty special. Um, but when it gets to the time on the floor, it's obviously a business. Uh, as usual, and energy up there seems amazing. So it'll be it'll be fun. Did you ever live full time in Toronto? Yeah. For a couple years or year and a half. To, okay. So the first year and a half that your dad was there. Uh, the last year and a half. Yeah. Okay. So you guys moved up from Charlotte. It's How a good was that time. year and a half? What do you What do you remember from that year and a half? I mean, just how. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> Chat. What chapter? Put you on the spot. Apparently, it's uh, well documented in Chapter Two of Golden, <laughs> written by Marcus Thompson. Uh, so I refer to that for my end. No, it's fine. Um, what was, what was it oh, <laughs> it was the culture was amazing. Um, it was cold. Obviously, we spent most of the winter months there, but uh, the people were amazing. So diverse. Uh, good energy, amazing candy. <laughs> amazing candy? Yeah, they, well, have, they, have, they candy? have a this brand called Maynard's. Shout out to them. I got no skin in the game. I just love their love their stuff. So every time I go back, I stash up. Um, but uh, going to Queensway Christian College, which uh, I believe is no longer in existence, but uh, that's where me, my brother, and my sister all went to school. It was a, a great, uh, great time there. Met some really cool people. Uh, still in touch with my middle school coach, James Lackey, who still supports me to this day. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of connections. And even at, at the arena, uh, a lot of the same people, you know, work uh, as ushers or security or in the back that were there when me and my brother were running around causing trouble. So. Uh, it'd be cool to take in that full experience. Do you and Aisha become like Canadians when y'all get there? Do y'all just be all Canadians? What, is, what does that mean? <laughs> we only wear <laughs> denim and go to <laughs> watch say hockey a and say A. Yeah. 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 Her, uh, she got a strong Canadian accent that comes back like that when she goes back. Oh, right. Yeah, for real. I, I'm always amazed when that happens, but other than that, no. What kind of candy? with the stuff in it? Poutines? Not really. <laughs> Not really. What kind of candy is it that's so so good there? Is it chocolate or hard candy? Or? Nah, no, nothing chocolate for me. No. Okay. This is going off the rocker now. Let's <laughs> hey, talk yeah. about basketball. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day. That's like secondary to did you win or you lose. Um, probably even way down the list in terms of, it's obviously there's legends that have won it and people that have done amazing uh, things in the finals and and whatnot. And I, I say that not to demean the award, it's literally, it's a special award uh, that everybody wants to get, including myself. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the first thing they do, they look up and see did you win or lose. Um, and everybody that has a part in that um, you know, feels feels pride about what you know what you accomplished, and same answer I always say. Don't get me wrong, I play to play my best and to you know, do what I need to do to help my team win, and that's never going to change. Um, and got to win, and then let the rest take care of itself. Steph, Kevin earlier, said, Kevin had said earlier that he was very appreciative that he supported when he won last year. I was just wondering, like in general, what what sense do you feel that how you react to that stuff sets the tone for the rest of the team? I mean, it's just my nature. Like I, 
there's no reason to, uh, in the positions that we are in, that's just nitpicking at the end of the day if I really want to cause a hissy fit about not uh, winning a finals MVP with all that we've experienced and all the, uh, the highs that we've been to. So, uh, like I said, when he won the last two, he deserved both of them. He played amazing, such consistent basketball at a high level. Um, do I feel like we win a championship without myself or with Draymond did or Andre did? No. Like I said, everybody has a part in what we do, and whoever wins it this year, it's the same vibe. You know, I could go out and average 50, but without the, you know, the contributions and the effort and the focus of everybody that steps foot on the floor, uh, you know, we're not putting banners up. So everybody can feel pride in all the individual accolades as well as the team. Steph, earlier this season, you called, you know, Cleveland in the finals kind of synonymous for this team, right? What is it like now kind of preparing for an entirely different roster, different team, you know, something that you guys haven't really faced before? What, what different challenges does that present? I love it. Um, everybody talks about it's hard to find that, uh, that edge or get up for, or that, like, find some sort of monotony in terms of, I don't know if you can find that in the finals, but that's part of human nature that you fight. So us getting on the plane tomorrow to go to Toronto, Different energy, different city, different you know views. Everything um, should prepare us to lock in and understand that we have a prime opportunity to start off this final series on the road and get a win and set the tone for how it's going to be. So I like I like the the challenge and the unfamiliarity of, of this this kind of schedule and flow and um, we've we've been there before and we've experienced a lot and this is. Uh, I think something we we're, we're capable of doing. Were you one of those kids? Because uh, question for Warren, uh, you watching it all over there? Kind of how has he been coming along? He's been coming along fine. I mean, again, as all that he's been through, coming off the initial injury and then you know, the quad, like so much rehab and so much missed time. Uh, but he's worked his butt off to get get give himself a chance to play and help us. Uh, I know there's a lot of conversations about what that means, what that's going to look like, but um, at the end of the day, if he's available to play and coach puts him out there, he's going to help us, you know, help us win. And you know, we'll adjust to the different rotations that that provides for us uh, if he's available. Steph, Sean was up here and you know, calling himself the old guy and and just his, I guess his basketball. Futures. We don't know how much he has left, but uh, he appreciates seeing what these young kids are doing because he's sort of helped groom that group to, to stay ready. How, how much? How much has Sean meant in, in terms of guiding those guys? And I know Andre as, as well. Just good sounding boards and examples of Sean, especially like uh, a very unique journey. That, to get to where he's where he's at, um, and how hard he had to work to get there, so and the patience that it took to get there. So I'm sure his story speaks volumes to guys that are trying to find their way in the league, and again, how much you know work that goes into it. But to know, uh, you know, if you're patient and you just grind, uh, it'll hopefully it'll work out for you. Uh, and they're just good people, good good human beings. They really care, genuine. Um, yeah, I feel like any any veteran like that, you got to buddy up to, you know, point you in the right direction. Were you one of those kids who had a Vince Carter poster? Was he? One I had the shoes. You had the shoes. Uh, yeah, I was a big Shocks fan back in the day. Uh, what did, what did what does it mean to you seeing this Toronto team kind of break through? Obviously, your dad was on that pretty good team back in the day. Well, that was probably their best team until the past couple of years. What have you thought about them breaking through like this? I mean, it was 24 years of their existence, and um, for them to get, you know, finally get over the hump, you could tell how much it meant to them. The city was going crazy. It looked like they had won the championship already. Um, the way that they were celebrating, and obviously, they, it's the first time there, so the fans really got into it. Uh, it looked like a crazy atmosphere, and like you said, that short 24 years, there's a lot of you know history and and. There are some great teams. I think it was 2002. Uh, team my dad was on with Vince and um, who else was on that team? Uh, uh, 
what's my guy's name? I set myself up. Tony Davis, uh, Alvin Williams. Uh, is Doug Christie still there? Yeah. It's a lot of yeah, Mo Pete. Um, so, but anyway, there's a guy, there's, they've gotten close and obviously the last couple of years, you know, I mean, you know, struggling with Cleveland. Um, but it's just, there's a lot of passion up there uh, for the game of basketball, for the Raptors, and, uh, and you can tell how much it meant. So uh, we know what the, what the task is going in, you know, starting on the road. Um, that building's going to be crazy, but we have a chance to get off on a, on a, to a good start. What kind of challenges uh, Kyle give you? I mean, he's, he's just tough and has a knack to, you know, stick his nose in, get loose balls, take charges. He controls the off-flow of the offense. He obviously can score if he gets, you know, he gets hot shooting from outside. So, um, and he's got a high, high basketball IQ. So, just got to know where he's at at all times. Um, just be smart with the ball around him. And match his intensity and his energy. That's the biggest thing. Uh, he ignites their offense in, in the open break when he gets you know, he gets steals or rebounds or whatnot, and just got to be ready to match that. Do you expect Kawhi to be on in important moments? I have no idea. When, how tough is he in, in just strict one-on-one type situation? And he's gifted physically with strength and his wingspan and you know, foot speed and all that type of stuff. So. Again, most good defenders can't play into their hands, can't get into a battle for position. Uh, I know what my strengths are and how to go at it, so I got to play to those. Um, and at the end of the day, whatever the matchups are, whoever's on you, you just got to make them work uh, within the way that we create open shots and create offense. So uh, be able to adjust to whatever they decide to do on that end. Kind of going beyond that. What are the challenges Kawhi present to this team? Because obviously he gave you guys some problems in that Western Conference Finals game one before he went down. So what, what makes him so pestering or uh, much of a pest excuse for you guys? I mean, he's just a, he's a scorer. And he plays at his own pace really well. Um, you try to speed him up, try to show him bodies. Uh, or play him one-on-one and, you know, he, he just – he has confidence to be able to get to a spot. So it's one of those things where one-on-one -on -one defense, you got to take that challenge, whoever's guarding him, try to force him into tough shots, understand he's going to make some of them, don't get deflated, get the ball out, go right back at him. Uh, yeah, but over the course of 48, same thing we do with you know any great score that we play against. It usually is not one person uh, that we're going to leave on an island, but you know just got to make it tough on him. Same way that they try to do to us, um, no matter who we play. It's been entertaining. Uh, you know, I know it's a tricky situation with uh, him being right there on the court, but at the end of the day, he's having fun. Having, you know, I can't, you can't hate on nobody having fun. I guess in this life, everybody hates when people having fun. So it's par for the course on that one. Any in and out trips expected when he comes to town? Last one. Any what? In and out trips expected when he comes to town? No, nah, that's the enemy. Nah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it, Thank you. Yeah.